Hello. Um, hi to people who may know me a little bit on Instagram. Um, and hello to maybe those who have never seen my face before. Um, I'm re-recording this introduction section because I've done it I've done it once before over at the weekend and it was way too waffly. So I'm gonna try and be a little bit more concise this time. Um, my name on Instagram is Orchid's Heart. Uh, it's a name I chose for social media when I was about 15 years old so maybe it's a bit cringe but as I hate coming up with names for things I've just I've let it stick um, and you know I'm used to it now so yeah on Instagram I'm Orchid's Heart. Um, I am a little bit nervous about recording this I've already recorded most of the episode um, so you will see a bit of an outfit change going on because this is my typical working from home outfit um, freezing cold, carrying on my lunch break. Um, I've been thinking about doing this for a little while, over the last year with everything that's been going on, uh, knitting, Instagram and the knitting community is probably the only thing that's really kept me sane and I've really enjoyed watching other people's podcasts and the inspiration that I get from that and the different ideas and input and I guess I kind of felt like I wanted to be part of it too um, and you know maybe share some of my creative ideas. I don't know if I've got anything new or exciting to add but a few of you lovely guys on Instagram told me I did so I mean maybe you guys are the best place to tell me that <laughs> so I really appreciate that um, so I'll just give it a go and kind of see what happens. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing, I have no video editing experience so this is a complete learning curve. So if anybody has any suggestions, do tell me um, because I'm doing this on a really rubbish cheap phone and on a pretty rubbish laptop, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so I guess full disclosure, this isn't going to be always a straight up knitting video podcast if this continues. Um, I think this one is the one that I've done because I've got a lot of knitting to share. But um, I mean a bit about me. I don't just knit, I love making things, you know, whether it be candle making or making my own hand cream or sewing or, you know, anything really. So I think natural dyeing as well, actually. I mean, you can't tell at the moment that the house has an overwhelmingly weird and not very nice smell at the moment because I'm heating up some various plants in the kitchen um, for dyeing later. Um, but yeah, so I will share bits about those things. Um, different projects I'm working on and yeah, maybe it'll bring you some comfort like all the other videos I've been watching have brought me comfort. Um, this this video today is probably going to be quite long and I apologise for that, I was kind of hoping to have a 20 minute, 30 minute episode uh, because I know some people don't have a lot of time and I didn't want to be overly long and waffly um, so I am going to try and learn to be more concise in the future but equally you know maybe if you like long episodes that's not a problem. I quite like watching long episodes because I put them on whilst I sit and knit and I probably don't watch the whole thing necessarily but I do listen to it so I find it quite nice to have something for my brain to focus on whilst I'm knitting. So yeah, I mean, I'm going to give this a go, going to see how it goes and um, yeah, let me know what you think and you shall see. So I wanted to film a segment um, today because probably I'm going to be winding these new skeins up into balls later because I'm really excited to try them out and I've nearly come to the end of my last sock project which I'll show you in a minute so it's going to be really hard to resist winding these up and having a go. Um, an Instagram friend of mine recently introduced me to this company and I fell in love almost immediately. It's called, um, they're called, he's called, John R. Bond and they are based in the UK, in Devon, and they spin all their local yarn, I believe it's all local, um, on vintage spinning machinery. And yeah, I mean, it was really interesting. Um, my partner's really into old mills, old derrick buildings and things like that. Sadly, the mill machinery is not in an old building, but it was still really interesting to watch the documentary, um, or documentary, YouTube information video. And I think one day we would like to go visit because it, it looks, they look really lovely and sound like a really lovely group of people. Um, but the yarn I bought, um, I bought their Exmoor sock. 
So I bought one, two, three, five skeins. Um, so even though I've still got quite a bit of my last sock cut yarn left, which I will show you in a second, um, I couldn't resist buying. Um, my justification is that um, my my mother really wants me to knit some socks for her. She's been knitting socks for me for the last couple of years, and so I have quite a few pairs of socks that she's knit. Um, and so I said I would knit her some socks for her birthday. Now her birthday isn't until August, so I've got loads of time. But the pattern I picked out um, includes skills I've never tried before. It's got colour work in it, so I might need to knit it more than once, have a practice, try something else first. Uh, so I want to give myself loads of time because I want to make sure that I give her something really nice and not just the first experiment. Um, though my mum's made me plenty of pairs of socks, she's, I guess, not so confident with trying new things and so colour work is something she's a bit afraid of. So I thought it'd be really nice to give her something um, that she can't do herself because, you know, what's the point of making her something she could just make for herself? So I wanted to give her something a little bit more special. Um, so the colours I bought and the names are really lovely. This one, this sort of aqua blue is called Mackerel Sky. So, yeah. I think it's a really lovely colour. Um, she actually picked this colour, but I might not end up being very much of it in her sock. And I'll explain in a moment. This was the first colour she picked out. Um, it's called Drumble, which is a, um, a local name for Bumblebee, I believe. This is a name for a cloud formation. Then I bought two of these and they're called Hemel. Now I have to admit, I thought they were going to be like a dark greeny blue, whereas instead they're very much a green. Not a problem, I still love the colour, it's just not actually quite the colour I was expecting from looking on the computer, which is, you know, always the way. And then the last colour I bought, which has the best name, I think, is uh, Bibblebug. Don't think the colour's really coming out on screen. It's very much sort of a purpley grey. I'm not very good at describing colours. I'm really, really fussy about picking colours. I'm not very good at describing them. Um, and I do have a bit of a problem with bluey greens, picking out whether they're more blue or green. I'm always having arguments with my partner whether what I'm wearing is actually blue or green. I call everything teal that's in that mid-gap and I'm sure that's not right. I would probably call this teal, but I'm fairly sure it's more green. I'm not sure. But my mum initially picked out um, these two. Now while they go together really well, and I would love to have a sock with these two colours, when I was going through the 52 weeks of socks book with her, um, not that long ago, I found it really interesting that every sock she pointed out and said she didn't like was in a purpley grey, purpley pink, sort of dusky pink or purple colour. She thought they all looked really drab. Whereas on screen this maybe looks more grey than it is purple in real life. So. I basically said, no, I'm not going to knit you a sock in um, Bibblebug because I know you won't like it, um, which is maybe a bit mean. So she'd already picked out this colour. So I said, I'll pick out a second colour for you then because I know she doesn't know what pattern I'm going to make her. So she did suggest this one, but I think the nature of the pattern I've picked is probably better to have something a bit darker. So in the end, I decided that this will be the main colour, this will be the main colour work colour, and then there's a very little, a very small amount of another contrast colour in a bit of detail, and so then I'll use the macro sky. So it will be these colours. But there should be plenty left over, so with the leftovers, um, and with the main sock being this colour, I'm going to make myself a pair as well. There might be enough here for two and a half pairs, I'm not really sure. Um, the first pair of socks I made, I used Coop Knit Socks Yeah, and that was also 50 grams a skein, like, like this is. And I only used just over one skein to make a pair of socks. So it is possible that I'm going to get a few pairs out of this, more than just two. 
I might have overbought but that's fine because I will use it all even if one pair ends up being like a funny colour block random sections type pair or I'll, I'll keep it back and I'll, I'll buy some more in the future because I really feel like it's quite likely I'll end up buying more so this is for some specifications 50 grams um, and 50 grams is about 200 meters and it's made of 60% Exmoor blue face and it does say superwash treated wool I have to admit I didn't realize that till just now 20% Corridale which is also superwash treated 10% Swartles I don't know how you pronounce that and 10% nylon now I have to admit I didn't realize it was superwash but to be honest it I did know it was washable I thought it was like the other one I'm going to show you in a minute which isn't super wash but is washable it kind of does need to be washable if I'm giving it to my mother because she's not that fussy about how she washes things so eh, never mind I would have preferred it not to be super wash because I understand it's quite damaging to the environment but you know it is local it's made by a small company there's loads of other sustainable aspects to it so I am happy to give it a try but that does maybe explain the difference in feeling between this one and the other one I'm going to show you in a second but anyway um yeah very excited to try so the other apart from the coop knit socks yeah which uh, those socks are in the wash basket and they already look quite bobbly and kind of a bit you know worn so I'm not going to bother showing those to you because you know it's, it's a common yarn I'm sure you can find some information about it somewhere else but the the first sock yarn I'm I invested in was this one I bought a few colors of it I'll show you the colors in a minute but most of them are knit up now this one is a quite an interesting yarn still got the ball bounds of them. it's called Amble and it's by the fibre company so this yarn is really interesting because it's made of washable merino wool but it's not super wash I'm just going to double check that but I'm pretty sure it's not super wash um, so an alternative to the standard chlorine process washable wool so yeah I think I think it's safe to say it's not standard super wash so it's made from washable merino wool and alpaca and recycled nylon and that's what drew me to it because there is plastic in it but it's not virgin plastic so that's quite exciting now it was quite expensive but i also feel like there was quite a lot in the skein it's 100 grams so double the size of one of these um and i did buy it when it was 20 percent off in a pre-christmas sale um and i bought three full skeins and a mini skein so i'm going to share those colors with you the colors i bought were i believe this one's called windermere so it's quite a basic blue it's very solid it's maybe a bit brighter on screen than it is in real life it's kind of a denim -y, den denim type color i think um but the yarn is really quite soft and squishy it feels really nice to work with and I have been wearing these socks quite a lot recently and they are definitely warmer than the superwash socks my mum has made me so the other colours I bought <laughs> you're going to have to see attached to socks <laughs> so this was actually the first sock I made with them so this is that winter mirror I just showed you and then they are a bit bobbly because I've worn them a lot um, this main colour, which you are not going to be able to see the beauty of on screen, is actually a really stunning colour. It's called Fair Hill and it is mostly grey, but up close it's got sort of purples, blues, pinks and greens in there. It's a really complex, stunning colour. I really recommend it. This one was easily my favourite. Um, and then this one is the one I bought the mini skein of and it's called Cat Bells. So I thought this was going to be way more orange and rusty, but actually it turns out it's pretty much an orangey brown brown, like it is quite brown. Still lovely though. And then this one, 
um, it was called Buttermere and it's like a bright yellow. So they were the colours that I bought. So the pattern, um, I've actually got a bit behind me. Hold on. So this is what my mother used to learn to knit socks. It's um, a book by Winwick Mum. But actually, Winwick Mum's tutorials are all online. So, you know, you don't have to buy the book. You can just, you can look on her website and I think it's all there. Um, but for my mother, the book worked better. So the book is really good because it shows you how to do it with uh, DPNs, tiny circulars, large circulars, magic loop. It covers all the options. And I quite like just having it open on the page I'm working on and being able to see like you know what steps I'm doing and for a beginner the pictures are fantastic so you know if you don't want to keep looking on the phone or the computer the book is really useful I do really recommend it um <laughs> this one's kind of been through some trauma <laughs> it looks like at some point she spilled some coffee on it but what I particularly like about this is that <laughs> you know it's kind of become a bit of a, a family thing now because my mum has written in it and I can see all of her notes and though my mum uses DPNs and I use um, small circulars so we're looking at different sections of the book it's kind of nice that we're sharing it um, so for now it's in my custody because she kind of knows what she's doing now and I'm still kind of learning so yeah so it was the basic um, sock pattern from there um, but I probably did more or less ribbing at the top and I did a two by one rib. She probably um, suggested a different type of rib. And I think I accidentally made my heel flap a bit short. Now when I first put these on after blocking, or even before blocking, they were incredibly snug. And I did think, oh dear, maybe they're not going to fit. Maybe they're going to be a bit tight. But possibly because of the alpaca, they have stretched. And they are now incredibly comfortable and they fit perfectly. Sorry, it cut out. I was just going to start showing you um, my second sock. I'm third sock. Tertiary sock pair that I'm working on. Um, so this is the finished one of the pair. I've nearly finished the whole pair actually. I'm kind of hoping I'll finish the pair either tonight or tomorrow night. And so again, this is actually the same basic Winwick Mum pattern. But I decided to do stripes. So I did about eight rows, one, one by one rib at the top. Um, and then I alternated Fair Hill and Windermere doing three rows of each colour. I should say both of these pairs were done on two millimetre, very short circular needles. Um, and then, you know, the heel flap, which I did in the yellow, the Buttermere, and I did a contrast toe in cat bells so yeah that's that one with the stripes though i'll show you what i'm doing on the the other one so in this really pretty little bucket thing um is it last weekend or the week no probably longer ago than that now um there was something going around on instagram called super second saturday and there was one maker on there i've been following for a while called folded forest and they do screen printed things like prints on the wall and bags and things like that um, and so I bought a couple of things from them this was one of them it's like a screen printed little fabric bucket and I have to admit I was going to gift it I didn't I ended up keeping it so I thought what am I going to use it for but it was really pretty um, but really good um, for my first pair of socks I made I used this really small little wicker basket which actually my phone has jammed in at the moment to hold it up <laughs> I hope I haven't distorted the shape of this basket by doing this um, because the coop knit balls were quite small um, but the amble balls when I started with them were quite big so this kind of became perfect to keep the, the sock in progress the yarn and then my, my little pouch that I made, and I sold a few of these recently on Instagram, that has um, like my sock notes notebook in there, and stitch markers, and needles and bits and bobs. 
And then floating around in the bottom, I've got things like scissors, DPNs, which I think are the devil. I hate them. I was moaning about this on Instagram the other day. They really hurt my hands, but they're kind of necessary for the toes. And I was using them on the heel flap, but I might start doing the heel flap on a spare pair of circulars as well, which, which is why I've got this floating in the bottom. It's another pair of circulars. So I find this quite helpful to carry around the house and actually yesterday when I went to work I dumped the whole bucket in a project bag as it was and took it with me <laughs> but yeah so um this sock then I mean I think I've only got a few more stripes to do and it's toe time what I've been doing is I've been doing jogless stripes and carrying the yarn so you end up with a bit of a seam inside now because I haven't worn them yet, I can't tell you if that's going to be a problem or not. But I'm kind of hoping it won't be. It's down the side of the foot. Um, so when you get to the last round of a colour, you slip the last stitch rather than knit it. And that creates the jogless stripe. But that's not what creates the seam. See, I mean, there is it is a little bit visible. Um, but... You know there isn't that funny jagged edge where because you're knitting in spirals there would be if you didn't do this what creates the seam is the fact that i'm actually carrying the yarn so rather than weaving in a billion ends which is what would happen um i am twisting the yarn round each other every time i go round regardless of whether i'm changing the color or not so the color i'm not knitting with is being carried up the inside um so this does mean a lot less ends to weave in. I've only cut the yarn, like I cut the grey when I got to the, the heel. So I wasn't carrying it for all of that because I don't know how that would work and I'd get really messy. And I will cut obviously both of them when I get to the toe. So there's a couple of ends, but not really many more, that many more than you would have if you did it as a block coloured sock. So I'm excited to finish that and try them. Um, again, they are really snug on my foot at the moment. So hopefully the striping effect won't restrict its ability to give a bit. This stitch mark on here, which I absolutely love, I have a bit of a obsession with mushrooms. Um, it is by Simple Natural Handmade, I think her name is, but I will put some information about her because she has some really nice things. A lot of mushroomy things, mushroomy crochet hooks that look really gorgeous. Um, but it's been a while since I've done some crochet, so I can't really justify that at the moment. Maybe though. Um, so that, that's nearly done. And then probably I will either do a textured sock from the 52 Weeks of Sock book, like a lace or something like that, cable if I'm brave, um, with this one. Um, or maybe... Maybe the row house socks in blue and yellow because I definitely have enough here for a full pair of socks, maybe one and a half. Um, and there's going to be quite a lot of yellow left as well. So I'm hoping that there might be a small amount of orange left, but I mean, that's that's really being hopeful because I only bought a mini skein of that. Um, because it would be quite nice to do the row house socks in blue with yellow houses and then the extra detail to be in orange. That could be quite nice. Um, and then I would have had some practice before using this. Although this yarn was more expensive than that yarn. So maybe I should be practicing on this yarn rather than this one. I don't know. But we'll see. I think out of three full skeins and a mini skein, to get three or four pairs of socks out of that is pretty good going. And actually in the end, maybe it doesn't make it that expensive. I can't really remember how much it was full price. I think I ended up paying £16 a skein. So, given that that was £8 a skein, actually it was price comparable with the discount. So, we'll see. So, for now, it's staying in this garsonal bag they gave me um, until I get to my next pair. And the work of progress locks are in here. So, yeah. I will say the other thing I did was when I got all of the yarns and wound them up, 
I did weigh them on some very accurate scales. They're used for um, like handcreme making and candle making and things like that. Um, because they weren't exactly 100 grams, they were a bit over. And I've been measuring the yarn again every time I make a new section on the sock and keeping track so that I can work out on average how much yarn I use for heel, how much I use for toe, how much I use for thick cuff or thinner cuff. So that when it comes down to this point where I've got scraps, I have a better idea whether I've got enough to do what I want to do or whether I need to buy some more or whether I need to get a bit creative or whether they really will be scrappy socks. Um, so hopefully when I finished this last stripey sock, I can do some maths and work out whether I have enough to do a pair of row house socks with them or not, whether I could do something a bit different. So we'll see. Um, my other work in progress that isn't really a work in progress um, because I haven't really started it. I'm gonna have, but is um, I think it's going to be the Fisherman Woman's Jumper by Vanessa Pelisa. Is that how you say her name? So, at the end of last year, I had a, a really lovely commission sewing commission, which I'm not going to share because it was a personal, it was a personal project for somebody. Um, and rarely are these things fairly paid. This was, which is why I agreed to do it, because I rarely, I wouldn't ever really agree to do a, a knitting or sewing commission for somebody. But um, it was fairly paid and it was a really lovely project, which I enjoyed doing. And it was for somebody that I knew would genuinely appreciate the time and effort and the quality of materials that went into it. Um, where, as I say, a lot of non-crafters probably don't realise how much work or love goes into something. So even if it is a very dear friend, unless I know that they would realise or appreciate, perhaps appreciate is a better word, appreciate how, how, how important, how special that thing is, I probably wouldn't bother. Um, so this was worth it and I was fairly paid for it. Saying this because... <laughs> I was quite decadent and I bought several bowl, balls of um, on a bit of a spur actually because this wasn't on a shop up, shop update she just posted on Instagram saying I've uploaded a few of these and I immediately bought some and maybe it was a good decision maybe it wasn't I don't regret it but I have found it really hard matching a pattern to the yarn because I love the yarn but it's DK weight and I've really struggled to find a jumper that I wanted to knit in DK weight I kind of knew in my head what sort of jumper I wanted and it didn't seem to exist in DK weight and actually the pattern I settled on, the Fisherman Woman's jumper, isn't DK, it's DK paired with something else and I did try that and I'll put in a thing of the swatch if I figure out how to do that and because I'm buying this online at the moment because we can't go to yarn shops I actually didn't like the combination of the colours I think it made the both of the yarns look a bit tacky um, it's just my personal taste, but because the white was a lot more white than I expected it to be, and this isn't white, it isn't look right. So, and I don't really like fussy things. And I kind of felt if it was fluffy and textured, for me that would be too fussy. So, mm, I decided I wanted this to be just this, so I can really appreciate the colours in it. So... This is um, from one of my favourite dyers, possibly possibly my favourite, Woolly Mammoth. I have a bit of an obsession with her yarn, to be honest. This is also Woolly Mammoth, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. And it's um, her Winter Hymn colourway. So this is it, her DK sock, I believe, and it's got really subtle hints of colour. Now, I wouldn't normally be brave enough to wear something white because I'm messy and clumsy. So this is going to probably not be a jumper I wear all the time. I'm kind of thinking maybe at home to snuggle up in and keep warm. I don't know how warm it's going to be, but it's got quite a thick neck. So I'm hoping that it'd be quite good to wear on top of other knits as well. So I did do that swatch and obviously I, I didn't really like it. But I did, I did a bit at the end of it where there was no um, alpaca with it um you know like extra lace weight yarn in there and I did like the way that looked so I decided I would just cast this on size down a needle go up a size in the pattern 
and um, just see what sort of happens. So I knit this much of the neck and then I put it on a really long cable to try it on and I can get it over my head so that's fine. And it is a bit messy on the outside but being that you're gonna fold it over and the other side looks like quite a lot neater I think it's gonna be okay. So probably I will knit 17 centimetres, see how it looks, knit a bit more and then when I get to here maybe try it on. Um, but I think it's going to take me quite some time because I've never done cables before and at the moment I know cables are not actually as hard as they look but when I have to learn something new or try something new I get this mental block and I'm like well I want to do that when I've got time and it's daylight and I can see properly and I can think properly and I'm not stressing which is really daft because then it takes me forever to try anything new but that's the way it is so and um this bag is one that i actually i made myself and the fabric i think is um from cotton and steel and it's actually a fat quarter i bought in japan i'd never heard of the company before uh, and i bought a couple of their fat squares and i absolutely fell in love with the feel of it because I don't really like quilting cotton so to me fat squares generally are quite ugly but um this one I really really liked and it's a really fun print and I really like it as a project bag it's not lined or anything it's quite basic this one actually isn't very well made it's a bit wonky I made it quite some time ago and I've gotten considerably better at making them now so also I think sometimes I'm a bit lazy when I make things for myself it's a bit different when I'm making things to sell and I'm paranoid that someone else will actually like it um whereas for myself I do get a bit impatient so yeah that's that's that project which probably won't reappear for a very long time yeah so let me talk about what I'm wearing um I am wearing a, a shawl it's knit in willy mammoth fiber fiber co yarn it's a Gotland blend, there's something I've forgotten, I will put it below, um, but the colour way well, is dark peony and I used almost two skeins. The pattern is called um, Waiting for Rain and it's got these really nice lace panels in them. The other thing I really liked about this was um, barely any pearl stitches so you knit back back and forth like you would normally um, but when you do the lace panels so for instance this one and this one you just go back and forth for that that tiny bit so it gives you this kind of this sort of long shape I will say I think my cast on edge is a bit tight it was said to me afterwards maybe I should have cast on a bigger needle so I think I would do that next time but I love it and I wear it a lot and the yarn smells and feels really good when I was knitting on it I just couldn't get over how good it felt so again this is something when I looked at the photo the colour wasn't really what I expected when it arrived and initially to be honest I was disappointed I, from the picture I expected more reddy undertones rather than pink um, and though I liked the colour, this colour has always been a colour that I thought looked nice on other people and isn't a colour that I would wear myself because I thought it was too similar to the colour of my face, which maybe is a bit ridiculous. Um, and so it sat there for a while in its skein and I was like, oh, you feel gorgeous, but I don't really like the colour, what do I do? And I was really gutted, especially seeing as it was kind of a Christmas present to myself. Um... But I thought, you know, I'm going to knit it up anyway. And actually, I'm in love with it. I wear it all the time. I really like the colour. I actually have a skirt that I've made where the colour goes with it perfectly. I actually quite like the way it looks with this jumper, which is one of my most worn jumpers. And it does go quite well with a lot of my clothes. So, and I mean, maybe wearing too many orangey things probably isn't that good for the colour of my hair. I don't know. Who knows um but yeah so i was initially disappointed but actually now you know it's quite good it isn't a color that i would have picked out in a shop i never would have picked it out in a shop 
but I love it. So perhaps it's what gave me more confidence to pick out colours like Bibblebug, which is like purpley. Not really colours I traditionally would have used, um, but colours I'm actually really enjoying now using. Um, yeah. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll, you'll probably realise by now I get really stressed by colour. In fact, I had a bit of a <laughs> stressful moment when I was recently making a colour crow's shawl. And the colours are gorgeous, but the scarf looked like a baby blanket. I was really disappointed. So this is also really well with yarn. I have other plans for this yarn. I'm going to re knit it into something else. But as a shawl for me, no, it wasn't, wasn't a good idea. But it's gorgeous and it is going to become something. It is not going to be wasted and it is not going to be a baby blanket. Um, but yeah, and then this is, I think, the second fitted garment I ever made. My first one. It's my third jumper. The first jumper I made a very basic sort of flat boxy crop yellow thing which doesn't really fit very well but it's really thick and I wear it quite a lot. And then I knit um, a Felix pullover which is what this is in Rowan pure wool and it transpired about three quarters of the way through that I wasn't knitting properly. I was twisting all of my stitches so the texture on it is kind of ugly and the sleeves are really long so it's a bit out of proportion um, and the gauge is really weird looking maybe because of the twisted stitches I'm not sure and also I, I think maybe I was a bit daft and didn't pay much attention to gauge because I'm fairly sure it was a DK wool and this is an Aran pattern an Aran weight pattern and I kind of ignored it in it anyway so it's really gappy looking so I am vaguely contemplating unpicking it and redoing it However, I have quite a lot of the yarn left, so I probably could knit something else with it anyway. Um, but if I unpick it, it would be the third time I knit that yarn, because I started knitting a jumper similar to that other flat rectangular one I made. And um, I thought, why am I doing this? I just need to get better at knitting and knit something that fits better. So this was the second Felix pullover I made. And I mean, this pattern's doing the rounds, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. The increases are these eyelets here, it's got some short rows in the back, which I don't think I did very well because they really stand out, but it's fine, it's on the back, and actually it just helped me figure out what's the back and what's the front, so yeah, it's fine. And I knit it with um, Willow and Lark Ramble, which is a DK weight yarn, and that's this like brownie grey, which I bought, um, somebody was selling my Instagram, uh, like a D-stash, so I bought like 11 balls from her and again I've only used about half so I definitely could knit something else with it um, and then I paired it with a Isoga um, alpaca in old gold um, but one skein of old gold was only enough to do I worked out from the green one the previous one I made how much yardage I need because it is it is cropped I don't know if you can see it is it is a cropped one that I've done I've made it much shorter and probably maybe a bit smaller um, and I had just enough to do the body and the arms and not the ribbing. So the ribbing, I just did just the willow and lark held single, um, which I actually quite like the contrast. I think it's quite effective. And then the body I did holding the alpaca as well. And I had the tiniest bit left, actually. It was a really good call. Um, yeah, so I love this. I wear it a lot. Um, it's not a true brown. It's definitely like a grey brown. And for me it really works so yeah but it is bobbling i don't think it's going to wear very well i don't think it's going to be one of those jumpers i have for years um it might become quite raggy at some point which is a shame but then i have got more of the yarn i could knit something else i probably will do because i don't like wasting things but um yeah i'll also show you i mean it probably would be better for me to insert a photo but um sewing is definitely something i'm way more confident with than knitting i've been sewing probably for 12 no 15 years almost i learned well probably longer than that to be perfectly honest i used to make clothes for my dolls when i was a kid um 
to varying levels of success. I wasn't very good at swimming then. I probably started learning in earnest when I was about 15. Two years ago, I upgraded my sewing machine and no, three years ago, and bought a overlocker serger. Um, and to be honest, most of my clothes now are handmade. I have always hated shopping, really hate it. I find it depressing. But so there's something really exciting about buying fabric. And about a year or two years ago, I discovered um, Merchant and Mills, which is a fabric shop. And I'm, a, I'm obsessed. I absolutely love it. And the beauty of linen. Uh, linen is much more sustainable fibre than cotton. Um, and I like the way it creases. Like it creases without looking horrid. You know, it looks scruffy on purpose, which is probably my signature style, scruffy on purpose. Um, so I do, I do really like their fabric. Um, it is more expensive maybe than other fabrics, but not by that much. And it sort of depends what you buy. I really like their tensile twill, and their their basic cotton um, is about range is about nineteen pounds a metre, which is probably only five pounds more a metre than maybe other places, and maybe the same, you know. And I, I really like their ethos, I like their company, I like their thinking, um, I love the colours and their customer service is really good. So this is actually um, a birthday fabric, um, it's called Isherwood and so this is one of the, the pricier linens, it was £24 a metre. I bought 1.6 um, with a gift card I was given for my birthday and the pattern is um, the Estuary Skirt by So Liberated. So it's got quite a lot of fabric, it's very, very swishy. I love the way it moves when you move around. And um, there's an option for patch pockets or um, internal pockets. I actually did both because um, a friend told me that the patch pockets distort a bit over time if you use them too much. Um, but I really like the way they look. And so I did the internal pockets for the sake of practicality and patch pockets for the look. Um, I did find it really hard gathering the waistband at the front where there was all that pocketiness going on, um, especially with the internal pockets, it made it quite thick and quite a lot of fabric to, to gather. I think if it was in a lighter fabric, like a tensile twill, not a tensile twill, a like the, the, the thin tensile that Merchant and Mills do, which I've used for quite a few things, I think that would be much easier. Um, but like multiple layers of linen was quite stiff so it took a while to get that right um, but it was worth it it's not really quite finished the back is actually still tacked down in bright pink thread <laughs> because um, as with most of celebrated patterns um, because there's elastic the elasticated waists which are really good for shifts in body weight you know the natural changes of the female body um, and if you eat too much, you know, and I'm partial to eating a bit too much sometimes, um, it, it, you know, it stretches and allows for that, which is really good. Um, but I found quality of elastic is really kind of mm, hit and miss, especially when you're buying online. Um, I made one of her skirts and I absolutely loved it. And once you've put the elastic in, you stitch over it so it doesn't like scrunch up and twist inside the casing and makes it look a bit nicer in my opinion and it was just too tight it was so tight it gave me stomach ache so i painstakingly unpicked the two lines of stitching over the elastic now that took a long time because it was on elastic and i was stretching it out and i'm picking stitches it took me quite a while to realize that perhaps if i put it over something in this case i ended up putting it over a vintage suitcase to stretch it out it'd be easier to unpick um but it was a grueling process and it really hurt my hands from battling with the elastic so it's not something I want to do again. Um, so now when I make specifically um, like an elastic waist item, I put the elastic in in a way where I can take it out if I need to and I wear it for a while like that. I'm at that point now I'm like I like the way it fits, it feels good, it's comfortable, it fits well. Am I gonna wreck it when I stitch over the elastic? I don't know. So at the moment it's still got pink thread in it and I was hoping this weekend to resolve that but I'm not sure I'm actually going to get around to it. And being that I see barely anybody, it kind of doesn't bother me. So I might wear it this way a bit longer. Who knows. Hi, oh, sorry, it seemed to cut me off. I seem to have a limit on how long I can make a video. I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching.
and apologies for it being quite amateur i don't really know what i'm doing um but do let me know what you think uh, maybe see you next time thank you bye